In this video, let's set up a username validator, a unique username validator. So this validator will check to see if the username is unique or not. And if we go to our checklist, the first thing we'll do is we'll work inside the servers. We created this in the last video and we're just gonna add on to it. We'll create a brand new method in there. And then we'll uh, set it up within our TS file inside of our username control. Let's open up our custom validation service we created in the last video. And then right below here, we're, we're gonna paste a snippet right below the method we created in the last video. So right here, we'll, we'll paste a snippet just to save time on the video. Then also we'll need to set up our app module. We'll need to import something in there. If we go back to here and go to this link right here, and I'll have this link down in the description. If you click on that, you wanna start off with your app module. In a second, I'll go over exactly what's going on here, but let's just set everything up uh, first. So right here, you need to import this into your module, copy this, jump back to here, and we'll, we'll set up that first. I'll paste it right here at the top, copy this, and you wanna bring this in to your imports right on the end here, just add that in. That's pretty much it for our app module. Save this, shut this down, and now let's finish off our service. Jump back here, and start off with these two methods right here copy them and I'll throw that right below the password match validator and then we'll have a bunch of errors we need to take take care of like let's bring this in from our angular forms and then we need to bring in our um, rxjs operators and I'll, I'll just copy and paste that so I show you right here what you need to import so copy this and throw that right up to top and then let's take care of this, this HTTP error and, and we need to bring in our HTTP client. So I'll just add that in here. And you wanna bring in that one right there. Okay, so we took care of all our errors. Now we're ready to go over what's exactly happening here. So let's start off with this method right here. And this is like making a fake API call. And right here within the assets folder, I already went ahead and added this. And this, this is like a fake database for us. So if we go, into our assets folder and open up this fake db json file and what this is a, is an array of objects and in each of these objects there's a property called username and here's the username as a string so this is what we're going to validate against so if the user and en enters in admin we're going to give them back an error so they're not allowed to use any of these usernames that i added in here and uh, this is like our fake database and if we close this down, so we're, we're making an HTTP call to our fake database. And there's actually different ways you could do this. You could actually pass in a username and have your server do the validating, you know, and return true or false. That's the way I commonly do that. But in this case, uh, just to keep it simple, I just return the entire rate and we check it on the client side, but you could do it many different ways. But anyways, here's a list of username objects we got. It's an array it's a type of array and then here we filter through it if there's 10 uh usernames with the uh let's say the we pass in the username admin right here and let's say there's 10 admins in that array we're going to get back all of them in this array right here that's basically what we're doing so we're filtering through them we're checking for that username in in that array and we're, we're getting back in an array we pass that on next step we return true or false observable so if there's any length to this array return true or false that's basically what this does so this returns an observable true or false and i can actually enter that in right here so observable and it's going to be a type of boolean so that's what this is returning so if the username is taken return true and if the username is not taken return false that's basically what we're doing here and it comes in as an observable so uh right here we're calling that method we're passing in the name like it, it requires. And then it's an observable, so we can go map through that. And right here, it's showing up that we're getting back a Boolean here. If it's true, like if the username is taking, then we, we're gonna set up a property like this. We're, we're gonna actually set up an object with a property called username taken, and it's true. If it's false, if in other words, there is no username that already exists, we return no. That's pretty much it for the, for these two methods. And keep in mind, you can move this method into another service called HTTP service or something like that. But for simplicity, I just threw it right with, within this service. But normally I would not add that within this 
service. So now we set up our username uh, taken validator. We can save this, shut this down, and let's check out our checklist again. Now the next step is to move into our signup component TS file, and then we'll add in that method into our username control. If we jump back in here, then open up the signup TS file, then inside of our username control as a third parameter, so here's parameter one, parameter two is this, and then as parameter three, we could pass in asynchronous methods. So comma, and then right here is where we're gonna add in our third parameter. And then it's gonna be our custom validator, that's the service, we just set up our method, and then call the validate username not taken. And then I'm gonna uh, open this up so we can see it better. Then here we're gonna add on to the end bind. This is gonna help set up our, our scope correctly, so bind. And then we're passing in the entire service. So this custom validator, that's what you wanna pass in. So you want your third parameter to look like this. Now that we set up our TS file, we can save this and let's set up our HTML. In the HTML, we'll just add some real basic feedback. We'll be extending the, the user feedback in a later video. But since we're on the topic of checking for unique usernames, I'll go ahead and add uh, validation in the HTML for that. If we go back to here and open up our HTML file, the sign up HTML, and then within the username control, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did with the confirm password like copy the ng class right here, copy this, and then I'll minimize this so we can see it better. And then right below the class, just paste this, and make sure you change this over to username. So we're checking the username control now, and we'll see if the username was touched. And then right below the input field, we'll add a div like we did right here. So I'll just copy this again. Paste that right below the input field. And make sure you change this over to username again. So if the username control has any errors, and instead of this error now, we're setting a different type of error. Let's go back into our service. And the error we're setting is right here, the username taken. So copy this, and jump back in here again, and replace this. And I'll min minimize this again so we can see everything. And then make sure you change this over to uh, whatever you want, like username is taken or something like that. And that's pretty much it for setting up our validation in our HTML. Save this. Let's check it out in the browser. Okay, so here in the browser, let's open up the console, make sure we're not getting any errors. And we're not, that's good. Okay, and then let's enter in one of our taken words. So if we go back here, go into our fake database, that is this file. And I'll just copy this. So any of these words should give us a, any of these usernames should give us an error. If we go back here again, I'll paste that in here. And username is taken, very good. And then if I enter in one, it goes away. Okay, so that's how you add a real basic username uh, validator. Now in the next video, let's add validation for the rest of this form. Like all these fields, they're required, and we'll give them back better feedback for that. We'll take care of that next.